Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, I have a fun one here for you because today we're gonna go and take a Limitless V1. We're gonna throw a couple different motors in it. We're gonna throw different gearings and we're gonna run it on the same voltage and see what the outcome is. Ultimately, we're gonna determine what happens when we place high KV motor in the Limitless and run it on a 4S battery. And then we're gonna throw in a a low KV motor and run it at 4S. We're gonna have both the gearing sets geared to over 100 kilometers an hour, and we're gonna see what happens with each setup in terms of heat, in terms of speed output, and overall current draw. So we're gonna get right into that. It's gonna be a fun and exciting one. If you enjoy videos like that, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the RC Explained channel. Let's get started by taking a look at the RC Patreon calc sheet. Here is the RC Patreon calc sheet. If you are a member of tier one or tier two, you will have access to download a copy of this for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're not yet a member. So taking a look at this, what we wanna do here is optimize for equal speed for both of these KV motors. We're gonna have one high, obviously, and one low. We're gonna go and tank the gearing and alter that so that we end up with the same speed. And then we're gonna see, does the low KV motor have have the torque to drive at the same speed as the high KV motor or is it going to be overloaded and incapable? So let's take a look here and see what kind of voltage we're gonna run. We're, we are going to run a 4S and the KV of the motor. We're gonna start off by looking at the 3650. We have a 3650 motor and a 1350 motor. We're gonna go and put this at a load factor of around 12. I think this is a good value. Uh, we're gonna be using the SMC battery. So I'm gonna, on the other side here, put in our average there. It was 0.95. I'm expecting a 4S here. We're gonna see what kind of speed we end up with and, and then we'll go in and lower this. I'm expecting it to be lower than 250. So let's see what kind of speed we get. We're gonna use our spur gear. I have a 46 tooth and I'm gonna place that in here and see what we can do with that. We do have to make sure that we got the limitless V1 selected. So that is, which means the pinion and the spur are set to the values that come stock factory on their tire diameter is not changing. So then we're taking a look at what we got in terms of speed, 3650, 4S, and we're gonna drop the 28 all the way down to, I think the smallest pinion I have is around an 18 that can fit. This is a five millimeter shaft. So now we're looking at about 70, one miles per hour, 114 kilometers an hour. I'm not expecting on 4S to be 250 amps. So this is the part where if you have really good exposure and experience to this, you'll be able to predict how many amps this thing's gonna take. I'm expecting it to be somewhere more closer to 130 or so when you're looking at actual current. Um, this is when it's at top speed and not during acceleration. Because ultimately what we're trying to do is see what the voltage drop is going to be and predict that so we can work that back through our RPM. So the load factor, I am picking a 12% because I think this motor is going to be heavily loaded um, based on it being only a 3650. So we're just barely into the front end of that. We can even pick, I don't know, 12%, 11%, doesn't matter. So we got now a total speed of 119 kilometers per hour. So this is roughly what we're going to hit for our other motor. And we're gonna select the gearing that we're gonna to use to work with that as well. So I have that in mind, let's jump through that. This is gonna be one snippet and we're gonna go through and change things now so we can get the 1350 kV motor working. So 1350, one of the things that I'm gonna change here is I'm gonna leave the load of current. So we're expecting to pull somewhere around that 130 amps again for this motor because we want to have that torque output and we need to get it from uh, each one of the motors to produce the power output for it. One of the challenges that we have here is our gearing is actually going to flip here. We're going to have to overdrive our motor set. So I'm going to put a spur gear here. I have a 29 tooth. We're going to see if we can get away with something there. And then we're going to have to dump a bunch of power at the top. So we're going to have a pinion gear at 34. I think I have a 30 four or a 36, let's see what 34 does. Uh, might need to do a 30, 
Okay, we can do a 34 there. And then what I'll do is I'm expecting this to be heavily, heavily, heavily loaded. So our theory shows us that this motor is not gonna be possible to push this kind of load. I'm expecting this load factor to be even higher than 15. I would expect it to actually be somewhere around maybe even 25 or more. So we're gonna see that this is probably gonna be in theory, if we didn't know that, maybe closer to 15 or so. And now we need to take our pinion gear. We're gonna knock this down to a 32 and that's pretty much getting into the area now where it's going to be equal to the previous. We're somewhere around 118 kilometers an hour and I can even go and take this load factor and see what it would be at 25. So 25, we're gonna knock it down to 105 kilometers per hour. I wouldn't be surprised if the load factor is even higher than this for this motor. So we're gonna see exactly what that works out to here. So now that we have our gearing, I'm gonna leave the load factor at a 15%. This is conservative because we did use 11% in the 3650 kV. So now we have gearing set identically using our calc sheet, and we're now gonna go and take a look at what it does here on the road. I'm gonna be talking my way through this. One of the first things that we gotta do here when we set this car up is to set the GPS. We're gonna track the speed and we make sure that it's actually tracking and now we can send that car off. Another thing that I'm gonna do is when the car is making its way out there and returning back, I'm gonna speed that up. So that's what you hear when the sound and the audio sounds a little bit funny and the car zips off. We are speeding this section up and now we're going for our first run here. And there you have it. That was moving pretty good. I expect that to be over 100 kilometers an hour at the time when I was shooting this. And now we're gonna stop the car, we're gonna grab the phone again, and now we just need to check that speed. And right after, what I wanna do here is measure the temperature. This is a 36 millimeter by 50 millimeter, wow. So I remember seeing that and being shocked how close it was to our prediction. 117 kilometers an hour on this 3650. And here's where I grab the temp gun and I'm gonna just peel the body away a little bit here, stretch it, and then see what kind of temperatures we have on the motor. Because the one concern with a 30 36 millimeter by 50 millimeter long motor is temperature. And we just hit over 100 kilometers an hour with this tiny little motor. So I'm checking now the motor cam because I saw temperatures there on the gun and I wasn't really convinced that that was true. So it was true and now I'm gonna send the car back out and we're gonna do yet another run with the 3650 kV brushless motor. I'm gonna get it out there again, we're gonna get it turned around, and then we're gonna go through another pass right here. Another solid pass, it does again. I'm expecting now that's still to be around that 115, 120 kilometer an hour mark. I don't know if I ended up getting a kilometer an hour or losing a kilometer an hour on it. So then we get that speed meter back out from the phone. This is just using one of the Sky RC meters and we read our result, 117. I remember feeling like that's a good backup to the speed. We just pretty much hit the same value twice consistently and that pretty well does it for speed readings. Now, the one thing I am concerned about still is the temperature. We ran back to back. I didn't give it any time to cool down between runs and we're still seeing temperatures well within a good good, safe, healthy region. In fact, what I ended up doing here is running it yet again, and again, a fourth time off camera, and the temperatures were still in check. So I was very, very surprised that this motor has been running this well. So now we got things changed up. You can see the shadows there. It's darker because I went home and I swapped the motors out. We're getting this thing now set up so that we can track the speed for the 1350 kV motor. That's now what's inside here. And you can see it really, really hesitating to get going here. And that's a problem. And I want to make another video talking about that, that we have an issue with that hesitation when we go to some extreme gearing on low KV brushless motors. There is a disadvantage there.
Now I remember there thinking that run seemed quite underwhelming. I was expecting more speed than what I saw. It looked like it was doing like 70 kilometers an hour by me. And that's not the case as you'll see here. So the speed that we read from our meter comes out to 88 kilometers an hour. That's a drastic drop in performance compared to the 117. Remember these things are geared to be identical in terms of speed. We have this overdriven in order to bump up that speed so that they're match. So something is significantly different here. I grab the gun and this is where I start to be a little bit more vocal here in the video that I'm recording because I was just floored and shocked and I didn't anticipate even talking in this video and trying to do an overdub of it. Done. One run. Yeah, she's, she's hot. I get one run out of it. Ooh, she's, yep. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely that's hot. up there at 70. Wow. Highly inefficient. I don't even know if I can do another run here. And I couldn't. I had to wait to do this other run All here. Right, I'm actually going to do this with the body off just because we get that more airflow. And I'm going to make sure that we have something recording. I'm going to start the speed here. Let's go track and start tracking and testing. Okay, there we go. We have it. I'll just test it here again. We're good. Now I don't want it to go and start up funny, so I'm going to give it a little push. I really don't like that startup hesitation. It bothers me because tons of current Try needs to, to flow through careful, the windings here. in order to get that thing going. So here's another pass that we're making with the body off. And we're wide open. It just seems so slow. Make our way because back. I'm is. pretty sure this is going to be the last run here. We have really high temperatures last round, and I'm expecting this to be over 70 degrees here when I measure it. And that was Remember underwhelming in terms of speed. That was probably around that 80K. We'll see here in a second. Let's get the thermometer on there. All the open wires. Yeah, that's the first time I've done that. Let's get the temp gun on it here and see what we're left with. Sixty-nine, seventy-one. Definitely hot. Like one run and this thing's cooking. I wouldn't want to go a second run without this thing cooling down. I think that's gonna do it for this one. I'm gonna unplug it. We're gonna see what kind of speed we got right now, and then we'll go from there. So let's see here. Stop, and we'll get it to read. And we got 87, so we got 88, now we got 87, as opposed to the 117. That's massive, that's a massive difference here in speed between our low KV motor here that just struggles to get off the line and our high KV motor. Here's our data log. I do want to go through this. This is the 3650 KV brushless motor. There's several things to talk about in this graph. Let's take a look at the first one here. The blue line represents the controller, the speed controller's output power. What we do want to see is that we hit 100%. And what I'm doing here to give myself some stabilization is I'm using a throttle delay. I think it's about a six second delay on that throttle. And then I pull full trigger right here and you can see how smooth that is. And the current should increase rather smoothly as well and it does seem to do that. We hit a couple little spikes along the way and then right when we hit 100% power output, as soon as we hit that we get a little bit of a spike in current. This is quite common, this is what you will see and as that happens our voltage actually drops but what's nice about brushless motors is we're going to actually begin to reduce our current now as we're at top speed and 100% throttle output, as we're beginning to accelerate but we already have 100% throttle in there we are now starting to see the current drop and the current drops all the way until it stabilizes in this area and this is when you really hit your maximum speed when you let it ring right out here we see the current dropping down to 108 109 amps or so we even see 105 so somewhere around 109 let's call it 110 amps we guessed 130 and it was actually 110 amps or so where it hit top speed. So this is the value in the calculator that I would want 
to use there for this particular run. So very good in terms of the graph that we get. Now let's take a look at the other one. Here you can see this is our 1350 KV brushless motor run. In order for me to make a second pass, I had to go and give it some time to wait. This little bit here is when I was just uh, playing around making the car go really slow. I was doing something, shooting another video. Maybe I can use that sometime in the future. But let's take a look at our one of these runs. They're both pretty much the same. So I'm gonna zoom in on this second run here and let's see what we got. So I'm gonna move this over a little bit and take a look at what we're doing. So we can see again, the same thing here. We have our curve and it's nice and smooth. Our current is also nice and smooth. We hit that 100% throttle and this is where we expect to be our top highest amount of current. So we do see that it is 110 amps where we're actually peaking as opposed to the 177 that we saw in the high KV brushless motor. What this already tells me is that this motor is not capable of producing the same power output output. We are restricted in terms of power output. We know that because of this, it's not possible to actually maintain the same amount of speed. We're not going to see 117 kilometers per hour because our horsepower of the motor just went down. And then we can see as we get near the end of this ramp here, our car is accelerating all the way down until it hits somewhere in this area. And we're getting about 67 amps or so, 67, 66, somewhere there near the last part of this section. So with 67 amps of power being pulled and we're getting temperatures already in the first pass as in the 70s, this is incredible. What this is essentially telling us is that this brushless motor cannot put the same amount of torque at the wheels down as our high KV brushless motor. We're able to multiply the torque and get way better output torque. Both of these brushless motors should produce identical amount of torque, but this essentially confirms that a low KV motor does not make more torque than a high KV brushless motor. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, taking a look at a low KV versus a high KV brushless motor when we're running the same voltage. Several of you have asked about this specific scenario, saying which one should I choose if I'm maintaining the same voltage? I'm gonna run a specific battery on both these motors. What should I be choosing for my setup? And this is a good way to look at it. If you're after performance, this video shows exactly what's gonna get you that performance and the reason why we could see tons of heat build up in that low KV motor because we have not optimized it for voltage, which is what the low KV motor is designed to do. That's why we have those KV options is to increase that voltage to get the power out of it. If we're not extracting the power in a way where we use voltage, this is the result. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching.